Hello again. Sorry, I had to stop it because my husband. But yeah, we are body, spirit, and soul. <clears throat> Not only we have to feed our spirit, our physical, we have to feed our spiritual with the word of God. That's why Jesus said that we can't only survive on bread alone, which is food. But <clears throat> all that is in the word of God, which we're going to survive because we have three enemies. We have the devil, the world, and our flesh. The only way to conquer all three is by the word of God and with the Lord. Um, let me come this way. He feeds... Okay, we feed our bodies, but we need to feed our spiritual. <clears throat> Jesus has to humble us. Like it said here, it says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna. So basically, Jesus, God, had to humble us in these times where <clears throat> we're desperate. We're like, oh my God, I don't know if they're going to close down the grocery stores, all these places. We're not going to have food. Everybody's freaking out. They're grabbing a bunch of food. But remember, you can't live on that alone. The only way to get through these times, <clears throat> the end times, is through the Word of God and standing on the Word of God and feeding your spirit with the Word of God because the time will come where that will be tested. <clears throat> it says... In these times, he had to humble us, causing us to hunger for him, for his word. We were too prideful, too greedy, forgetting what God blessed us with. We were too focused on our abilities and in different sources than of the main source and trusting in him in every way. He said he will provide our every need. So if he said he'll provide our every need and we don't have to worry about anything, it says it a hundred times in the word of God. God says in his word, don't worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow for today has its own problems. And he said, don't worry about what you eat, what you wear, none of that. Because he provides all that if you trust him. If he can feed the birds of the air, the animals everywhere, like the squirrels, the birds, all those animals that are out there. If he can feed them, what more are we to him? You understand? So we're going to go. There's a story that is perfect for these times. So we're going to go to 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. And this story is um, about Elijah and the widow and her son. 1 King. I thought I put a... Anyways, 1 King. Right here. Okay, sorry, I'm all over the place. We're going to go to 1 Kings 17, and we're going to start at 7. Um, it's called, God sends Elijah to a widow uh, of Zerpheth. And I read your word, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Hmm. Sounds like us. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zephyrath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. Now God says it, and he promises it. You better trust him and know that he will do what he said he will do. So he went to Zephyrath. When he came to the town gates, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I will, so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, pe please, a piece of your bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. So... <clears throat> She's thinking that she's going to die. My husband's laughing at something on the phone. Or my daughter. Um, but she's thinking that she's going to eat. That's her last meal. That she's going to die. And that's a lot of you guys now. That you feel like this is going to be my last meal. I'm going to die from this coronavirus. You know. And it's like little do you know if you trust God. 
and you believe in his word, death can't come on you. Because it also says that we shall not die when you're children of God. Okay. <clears throat> uh, where am I? Sorry, guys. Um, right here. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry, until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. So he's saying, I won't let you hunger nor thirst, like his word says. He's not going to let us just not eat or anything. But also, he won't let us hunger or thirst with his word. Because when you drink his word like water, it, 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 will, it will quench your thirst. Really, babe? Fear is a liar. Come on, you're interrupting my. He's putting fear is a liar. The song, it's true. Okay, anyways, babe. So she went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Um, and then this one I would like to speak on it's about even if the, you become ill and stuff you gotta trust God that he is a healer so it says sometime later the son of the woman who owned the house became ill he grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing she said to Elijah what do you have against me man of God did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son give me your son elijah replied he took him from her arms carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed then he cried out to the lord O lord my god have you brought tragedy also upon this widow i am staying with by causing her son to die then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried to the lord O lord my god let this boy's life returned to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. <clears throat> he gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is true. So, when you trust God, you pray to God. Like we should be doing all the body of Christ is fasting and praying and getting into the word of God and praying for these people that don't have God that is affected by this. And we pray against that illness and disease in Jesus name and we stand on his word, which is true. Then God will show his miracle. God shows his miracle in every day of our lives. You know that one we're alive. We woke up and we're alive. That's a miracle on its own. Two, that we eat every day, that we have people that have jobs still to have their jobs. People that don't have jobs and they're, they're getting income still, God is good and you should thank him for that. I know I am. All right now I'm out, out of work right now because I work with the school district. But I trust God with everything in my life and he has never let me down because I stand on his word. I don't live on bread alone. I don't live on my finances. I don't live on this and that. I don't just live on that. I live on God, number one, because he's the one that provides all those things. And without him, we're nothing. We can do nothing. So, you know, you, you need to focus on your relationship with Jesus, especially now, you know. And I pray this word over you that God will continually... Um, prosper your finances prosper in your home and your life in every way but i also pray number one for your salvation whoever's watching this i pray that you give your life to the lord i pray that god is he, god is calling you right now do not reject his call do not hang up do not walk away there's a reason why god is calling you you don't know when your last day is you, and and when you die, you won't know where your soul's gonna go. 
and you don't want it to go to hell. You know, God doesn't want anybody to perish. So I pray right now for you that you give your life to the Lord. As I close out this with a prayer, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you guys, and I hope this encourages you guys. This is really a word from God. He gave me this word, and it's for somebody. I don't know who you are, but this is for you. And I pray that you have ears to hear and a heart to receive what God is trying to tell you. Um, I pray right now for you guys. Um, and I give you an opportunity if you haven't given your life to the Lord. Um, I would like to um, tell you that you just have to open your heart to Him. And um, accept Him as your Lord and Savior in your life. I would like to do the prayer for you today, but before we do that, I want to pray for everybody right now. Lord, Father God, I thank you for this beautiful day that you woke us up, Lord, because not a lot of people are waking up, are not alive. So I pray, Father God, for those that are watching this, Lord, I pray that you help them and that you provide their every need, Father God. I pray that you lift them up in their spirits, fill them up with your Holy Spirit, God. I pray that you touch them through this video right now, Father God, that you will heal those that are sick, Lord, that you visit them in the in the doctors, in the hospitals, Lord. I pray for every doctor, every everybody that is in contact with others that have this disease, Lord. I pray for them, Lord, that you protect them and cover them in your blood. I pray, Father God, that you be in that place, Jesus, the same way that you healed the leopards, I pray that you heal those that have this disease, Father God. And I come against the coronavirus in Jesus' name. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name right now, Lord. And I command it to leave in Jesus' name. As we stand in one body in Christ, Father God, we meet, we, may we agree in one. I pray also for those that don't have you in their lives, that they give their lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I would like to do the salvation prayer with you guys. Um, hold on. I have one in here, actually. Um, if you don't have a church to go to, we have um, <clears throat> a church. It's called uh, Word of Faith. They have um, a page in, on Facebook as well. Um Pastor Jerome and Yolan, they're awesome. They're my pastors. They tend to their sheep. They uh, feed their sheep with the word of God. And it's just beautiful just to have them in our lives and to be in their church. We are blessed. And uh, I don't think I have it, but we're going to pray anyways. All right. So for those that want Jesus in their life, just close your eyes. And just pour out your heart to him. You know, um, when I came to Christ, I didn't have all the words, the perfect words. All I said was, God, I give you my heart. If you want to pee after me, Father God, I pray, Jesus, that you come into my heart. What's wrong with her? Okay, uh, let's do this quickly. Um, I pray that you come into my heart and that you be the Lord of our lives, Father God. I pray that you change me, transform me. And I thank you, Lord, for um, what you did on the cross, Jesus. And I believe that you died for us and for our sins and that you are the Lord. You're the son of God, Lord. I thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. I got to go tend to my daughter. Um, have a blessed day. Bye.